This is the lock nest, and the lock I have for you today is the Fichet M3B. This lock is manufactured by the company Fichet Bosch, which is specialized in uh, vault and safe manufacturing. Uh, the other Fichet company you may know is Fichet.4, which is the company which is uh, specialized in uh, door locks. So, uh, this lock is a lock you will find in safes manufactured by uh, Bosch, Fichet Bosch. And uh, it's a lever lock. Uh, this is a lock which is uh, composed of eight uh, levers. And the key is typical to this uh, um, series of lock. Uh, there is the Fichet M2I, M2B, and the MXB. Uh, this one is the M3B. The main difference with M2I and M2B is that this one has eight levers instead of seven. And the eighth lever is the one which will interact with this uh, interactive element, which is a ball. And uh, we'll talk about it uh, a little bit more uh, later. So how this lock works? It's very simple. You put the key, you push. As soon as the key is in the lock, all the levers are set to the correct position and the lock can turn very easily. So you may note here that this is a very short key, but depending on the, on the chip of safe you have, you may have very longer key. Uh, Sometimes the key may be uh, more than uh, six inches uh, in length, uh, because since this is a safe key, depending on the type of safe you have, you have some fire safe which doesn't require high security. So the door are small and uh, the lock is much more embedded in the, in the door. But for high security uh, safe, then you will have the, the lock which will be far away behind the, um, the face of the door. So you will need a longer key to be able to reach uh, the lock. So to better understand how these locks work, uh, I will uh, dis disassemble it. So here we have uh, the complete lock. So it's composed to the outer barrel, which is uh, the barrel which will uh, uh, block the levers if they are not in the good position. And you have the inner barrel, uh, with uh, all the levers. Uh, to, uh, so how it works here, I can show you. So here you can see that at rest, you have part of the lever here, which is in this groove here. And this lever, which is at a certain eight, and you see it's different for all the, the levers. And when I put the key in the system, you see that there is no more uh, levers within this groove and all the levers here are aligned correctly. So why? It's because uh, here you will see that at rest, the levers will uh, be blocked by this part here or here. And here too, because this, uh, this thing goes directly in the groove here. And as soon as everything is aligned, then uh, the levers will be here and we'll be able to rotate. So here, which is aligned with this spot here. And uh, for the other side, it will be in this groove and we'll be able to uh, rotate safely. So to have a better view of that, uh, here is uh, a picture. So first, uh, I will start with the picture of the key. Uh, you can see uh, this is a 3D view from a patent of the key. You can see uh, the key in blue and the ball in red. So for other uh, drawing I will show you during uh, this presentation, we will keep the same uh, color code. So this means that the ball bearing, all the ball bearing will be in red and the, the key will be in blue every time. So now uh, we can take a look at uh, the lock itself. So here in this picture, you can see on the left, 
This is the lock, uh, which is in the, I may say, the rest position. So as I uh, explained to you, you have the two parts of the levers which block the external barrel. So the external barrel is in uh, yellow here, and the internal barrel is in uh, gray, like uh, in reality, in the, in the lock we have. So you can see at rest and left, uh, the lock uh, is blocked, can't rotate because of the lever here, which uh, block the rotation, and uh, the lever at this position too. As soon as we enter the key, you can see uh, on the right, for example, then the lever will align with the free space, the grooves in the uh, external barrel, and then this is why the system will be able to rotate. So if we come back here, so you can see clearly the, the, the space we talk about for the groove and uh, the, the levers. So now what's interesting is uh, to see how uh, the levers are assembled and how it works. So I will uh, disassemble the inner barrel. This is disassembled. I will uh, remove the back plate. So here it is. You can see all the, the place where the, the spring goes. And here is our lock. So you can see the springs. You can see the levers inside. And something which may seem uh, obvious is that here, you have a spring which is really not like the others. And I, I will talk about that later. This is for the interactive element. So something important while manufacturing and designing this kind of lock is that the system is circular. And when you have a circular system, the main issue you have is that everything which is close to the center of the lock is very close, all the parts are very close together. And this creates several issues and which need to be overcome during uh, the design process. One of the most obvious we can see without disassembling the, the cylinder is the key. When we look at the key like that, it seems that, okay, it's a symmetric system and uh, no problem with that, there is a machine which create the key, etc. But if you check that in more details, I will zoom on the key, you can see here that the, the, the groove in the key here, for example, I try to show you clearly here, sorry. Here you see the, 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 the system is not perpendicular, the cut has an angle here. And if you check the angle, it's the angle which allow to go over this thing here. So in fact, they had to make this uh, not perpendicular like that to prevent the machining system to go and damage this part while you are cutting this one. So they put a stem like that so the cutting machine can come here and cut it correctly. So this is the first things. Now uh, there is another issue is that um, as you can see on the picture uh, we saw previously, uh, on the levers you have um, a point of rotation, an axis of rotation which is in red, if you look correctly. And why this is in red? Because as I said previously, what is red is the ball bearing. So here, if we look at this lock, in fact, the axis of rotation of the levers is here, very close to the center. So if you try to machine something, you have very small place, and if you uh, one, for example, to put from here um, 
an axis of rotation like a pole, a small pole or something like that, it will be really difficult to make it fit correctly and horizontally like that we, uh, during the assembly process. So what Fichet decided to do is instead of using a pole, which is diff difficult to, um, to set horizontally inside a small hole like that with few space, they decided to use um, a ball bearing. And I will try to remove this, um, this lever to show you exactly how it looks inside. So, so here you see the, the lever and the ball bearing which comes with it. So here you can see, so you have your lever and the ball bearing is used to rotate. So since there is the spring here, which push on the, on the lever, this lever will stay at the bottom of the system and will not move uh, up. So here, uh, the stem can rotate and in fact, as we talked before, the key comes here, exactly in this part, like that, to set the uh, lever correctly. And this is this part and this part, which uh, block the system from rotating if uh, there is uh, not the good position. So now there is uh, the second uh, interesting system is the one made uh, for the, um, the uh, interactive element. So in fact, this system is slightly different and uh, I will explain why. First here we have a spring which is way, way, way stronger than the other ones. Why? because in order to position the lever uh, correctly for the, um, the, the interactive element, we need to apply a strong force because the ball need to roll between the lever and the key system and go in a very specific position. Furthermore, the lever has more move room from movement. So in order to be sure everything will move correctly, even if there is dust or uh, rust or whatever system which try to prevent it to work correctly, it needs to work. So you put a lot of force on it, so the chances everything will go in a good position is higher. And because of that, they had to do something special for this one, is that they had to put a ball bearing at the bot uh, just between the lever and the spring, you can see it here, in order to allow the spring to move uh, on, the, on the, the lever without bending and without being damaged. Because this lever, because of the mechanical movement which will be implied by the, by the system, they had to I will remove the, the ball bearing, no, I remove the, the system, the lever. Yep. So here you see that um, for this one, when the, the, the system, uh, the key enters in, the ball will go here. And there are some room to allow the system to move and uh, to allow the ball to position correctly without creating any uh, issue. So if the ball, the center of rotation here moves, the spring which push here may move too. So uh, we have to ensure that uh, no issue will happen because of that. Uh, I will show you how it works exactly uh, using some drawing. So here you have a uh, uh, three examples of the, the ball bearing in different positions. So on the left, which is the figure one, you can see that uh, the shape of the levers 
of the lever uh, implied that the ball bearing will move up to the top. And then because of that, this, the lever will be at the good position. On the figure two, then the position of the ball should be in the middle. And uh, on the example three, uh, we can see that it's, it's at the bottom. So in fact, it's the lever which will set where the, um, the, the ball bearing will be. So um, you may say it may be possible probably to create a key which uh, will be able to work with that, but uh, not sure uh, uh, it will be uh, really easy or it will work efficiently depending on where the system expects to have the ball. Um, now, on a uh, picking perspective, uh, it's possible that this may not make a huge difference. However, since we have seen that the axis of rotation uh, may uh, change uh, because of that, it's possible that just pushing up and down may not allow to position the uh, lever perfectly and that it may be required to uh, position it uh, uh, vertically and horizontally a little bit to ensure that everything is set correctly. So um, here it is for uh, this lock. Uh, if you are interested in this kind of lock, you can take a look at my uh, eBay store. There are some available from time to time. Uh, if you want to see more video like that, you can uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Facebook and uh, you can take uh, see pictures of uh, cool locks on uh, my uh, Instagram page too. So thank you very much and have a nice day.